So several US states were independent countries before they joined the Union, but only one of those was governed, in part anyway, by people indigenous to the area that it controlled. For a century, the islands that today make up the state of Hawaii were a sovereign kingdom. So then, why did America take over? How did the US annex Hawaii? Well, the Hawaiian Islands have been inhabited by humans since at least the year 1000, but it took until the turn of the 19th century for them to be united. From the Big Island, or just Hawaii, the warrior king Kamehameha the Great conquered his neighbours in 1795 and declared himself King of all Hawaii. The final two islands would eventually peacefully swear allegiance to him. Then, beginning in the 1820s, Americans and Europeans began to take an interest in Hawaii, though not as empires coming to conquer, but rather as missionaries who moved to the islands and, fairly successfully, spread Christianity among the native Hawaiians. Although the missionaries would soon shift their interest towards something much more temporal, profit from sugar plantations. Over the next few decades, whites remained a minority in Hawaii, but their control of land, wealth, and political power disproportionately began to grow. When the first Hawaiian cabinet was formed in 1845, for example, four of the five new advisers to the king were white Americans and a Scot. Meanwhile, the US was expanding westwards, and with that, the Hawaiian sugar industry took off. It was made even better by the Treaty of Reciprocity, which allowed Americans to import Hawaiian sugar tariff-free. The city of San Francisco, in particular, became a hub for sugar refining, and between the treaty's signing and 1890, the value of Hawaii's sugar exports went up by over 700%. Of course, that money wasn't going into the pockets of ordinary Hawaiians, far from it. Though the monarchy, at least for now, was still cooperating closely with the white-dominated sugar industry and getting its cut of the profits. That was until in early 1887, a group of powerful businessmen and politicians formed the Hawaiian League, also known more blatantly as the Annexation Club. They gained control over a regiment made up of Hawaiian-born white soldiers, the Honolulu Rifles, and with it they forced Hawaii's King Kalakaua to sign the so-called Bayonet Constitution, which stripped him of most of his power and gave it, unsurprisingly, to the members of the club. Notably, Peter C. Jones, head of Hawaii's largest sugar company, as well as the fantastically facial-haired Sanford B. Dole, whose family would found Dole Foods. However, in 1891, King Kalakaua died and was succeeded by his sister Lilio Kalani, who, acting with popular support from native Hawaiians, attempted to rescind the Bayonet Constitution, an idea that the Hawaiian League wasn't a fan of. This time, they weren't going to be satisfied with making a puppet of the monarchy. They wanted it out of the way, and they wanted to ensure the easy sale of their sugar in perpetuity by uniting Hawaii with the United States. On January 17, 1893, the Honolulu Rifles marched towards Lilio Kalani's palace on Oahu, where they were met by her royal guard. At around the same time, the US ambassador to Hawaii, John Stevens, arranged for American marines and sailors from the USS Boston to land in Honolulu Harbor. Ostensibly, the US troops were neutral, only sent to protect American interests in the city. In reality, their presence provided the leverage that the League and the Rifles needed to successfully carry out their coup. Queen Lilio Kalani surrendered on the same day that it began, with barely a shot fired. She officially abdicated in 1895 after a failed native rebellion to restore the monarchy. With her gone, the Republic of Hawaii was proclaimed, with Sanford Dole as president. His only real goal was to secure an American takeover of the islands, but that ran into a bit of a hiccup when President Cleveland did something rare in history. He objected, on moral grounds, to his powerful nation eating up a smaller one. His successor? Not so much. In 1898, the sugar industry got its wish. Hawaii was officially annexed, and Dole became the new territory's first governor. All, by the way, done over the protestations of native Hawaiians, who never consented to their island's annexation or eventual statehood in 1959. Unfortunately for them, immigration from the mainland United States, as well as from large parts of Asia, has rendered the native Hawaiians a tiny minority in their own land, and Hawaii will likely remain American for a long time to come. <laughs> 